to week three. Yes, we are at week three. Can you believe that, how fast the time flies when you're having fun? You know, this week we're going to dive into hard drives. And for some of you, this is going to be a deeper dive than you would ever want to know. You're going to learn more about hard drives than you will ever, 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 ever want to know. But that's okay. Now, with that said, I really can't overstress the importance of not getting overwhelmed. Because see, I realize that, uh, you know, in this class, you know, some of you guys probably want to pursue a degree in IT or, a, or you're pursuing your A-plus certification, and that's great. But I also realize that some others in this class, you're just taking this course as a prereq or as a uh, course you're going to need to finish up your major. So with that said, I, I, I try to build this class, uh, or to present the class, rather, I don't build it, the, someone else does, present the class in a manner that nobody gets overwhelmed or underwhelmed. Now, I always like to try to give the, the big picture. So when we talk about computer hardware, I like to use analogies and to bring all the pieces together because we've been talking about CPUs, we're going to talk about memory, RAM, uh, layer level one, level two cache. To this week we're talking about um, hard drives, we talked about power supplies, but how do you bring all this together? Now I like to use an analogy and the analogy I love to use is the kitchen. Yes, the kitchen, um, because I like to cook sometimes, and my wife loves to cook. So I'm sure all of you have a kitchen at home. So here's how I love to put this analogy together. Think about your kitchen. In your kitchen, you've got a refrigerator, you've got some oven stoves, but also you have countertops, right? And, and anybody who ever bought a home and you have, or if you love to cook, you know you like a lot of countertops. And then you have places where you prepare things. Okay, so let's look at uh, this analogy of your, your computer. Let's compare your refrigerator to the hard drive. Because what does a refrigerator do? It stores things long term, just like the hard drive. It's storage for long, uh, just where you, your files go and they, they stay there for long, for, for long periods of time. Now, when we say RAM, or random access memory, that is very similar to your countertop. Because your countertop is where you store things for a short term of time until you're ready to use them. Okay? Because you just don't want to leave things, especially things that are perishable, sitting out on your countertop, right? Because that's why you have a refrigerator. Now, in this analogy, we're going to have a cutting board. And our cutting board is going to be analogous to the CPU and the motherboard. And on that motherboard, you have this actual CPU. And what's the CPU in this analogy? It's me with a knife in my hand at the cutting board. Okay, so let's say I want to make what? A fresh garden salad, right? So I'm going to go to my refrigerator, aka the hard drive, and I'm going to get lettuce and tomato and cucumbers and celery and everything that I want to put. And I'm going to bring it out and put it on the counter, right? Now, what happens if your counter is too small? Think about it. What do you have to do? You have to constantly keep going back to the refrigerator, getting things out of the refrigerator, and putting them on the counter. And when you finish with them, you got to put them back. Where your computer is the same way. If your counter in your computer, your kitchen counter, which is what the RAM, if your RAM is too small, that's what happens. Your computer is constantly having to go through the hard drive to get code, to get files to bring, to be processed. So that's why when you buy a computer, if you're not already familiar with this, it's just like buying a house in your kitchen. You want to get as much counter space as your wallet can stand. Because the more counter space you have, the more things you can bring out of the refrigerator. Likewise, on your computer, the more uh, RAM, random access memory you have, the, the more things you can process. So then the less you have to go back to the hard drive and, and keep pulling things off. Okay, so now, so I've got these, I've I got a lot of RAM. So I've got all this stuff sitting out of my kitchen counter. I've got tomatoes and lettuce and all this stuff. And i got a cutting board. So me, I am the CPU. So as I'm chopping things up on that cutting board, I'm putting them back into bowls and I'm putting them here and there. <clears throat> now, if you're like most people who cook, the things that you use a lot, you want closer to you. The things that you're going to use sparingly, they're going to be setting farther away on the calendar board, on the uh, countertop. That is what your level one and your level two cache. You may have heard these terms if you're not familiar with them. That's what they are. They are, that's memory that's actually right there really close to your CPU. So that way when your computer gets code and things off um, that's going to be used a lot, for instance, if you're doing uh, Microsoft Office and you got Word open, well, the actual program for Word, a lot of those instructions are sitting right there in, in cache, which is very close to the CPU, which means that it is really fast. And your CPU can get that code, those lines of instructions really quick and process them. Just like if I'm cutting cucumbers, and I like cucumbers, so I'm going to put a lot of cucumbers in my salad, okay? So that means I got my cucumbers really close to me. So if I grab a cucumber, cut it up really quick, grab another. Now, I wouldn't want my cucumber sitting way at the end of the counter because that takes me a long time. I gotta walk up here, grab a cucumber, bring it back and chop it. Walk, get another one, bring it back and chop it. So that is what cash is. <clears throat> and there's two types of cash, level one 
in level two. Uh, your level uh, one cache is actually on the uh, motherboard, whereas your level two cache is actually a part of the CPU. It's actually ingrained, embedded in the CPU. So I'm the CPU, I'm the, the CPU, and I'm chopping. I'm, I'm doing the processing of these things. So that is how a computer. That's my simple, simple analogy of how a computer goes together, just like a kitchen with kitchen counters. You want a lot of it, just like RAM. And it, I'm serious. Whenever I try to buy a computer, I try to put as much RAM in there as I can because that's less work on the hard drive. Um, so. I hope that analogy made a little sense to you. I'm sure some of you guys are going, okay, I'm more confused now. I hope not. But yeah, I always like using those analogies for the high level. Now I say, when we get into the hard drive this week, boy, yeah, it's going to go a lot deeper than you probably want to go. But that's okay. Second thing I want to talk about really quick, again, you guys are just giving me some great comments back and I love it. Um, message in a minute. Uh, yeah, we got one coming this week on um, out of Proverbs, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and discretion. I hope you like that one. Now, the thing with these messages is in a minute. Now, I always like to make this clear because I know at, at, at IW, you get people from a diverse backgrounds and diverse belief, uh, belief systems, which is okay. And I, I love that. So when I do these messages, they're not to try to persuade you, to try to change your mind, to try to change your belief system. It's merely give you some information, some food for thought, hopefully that you can make uh, better decisions with. But when I think about belief systems, I always have to ask the question, how committed are you to whatever it is you believe? And what do I mean by that? Many times when I talk to people who have various belief systems, you know, they kind of flow back and forth. Well, I kind of believe this, I kind of believe that, and you know, kind of just all over the place. I tell you, the great thing about, for me, this is me personally, is that my belief in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and, and the reason I can be fully committed to it, is because I can afford to be wrong. You're like, what do you mean by that? Well, let's just say, let's for instance, that all of this Jesus stuff and all of this stuff about, you know, uh, salvation, what if it's just all wrong? Okay? Well, you know what? On this planet, every day about 100,000 people die. And one day, I will be in that number of 100,000 people that will die. And, but if I am wrong, okay, I just become a pile of dust. Not a big loss, is it? But just suppose that... Uh, I'm not wrong. And there actually is a heaven and a hell. Wow. And when that day comes, when I'm a part of that 100,000, I would surely hate to gamble against that. That would be a hard uh, bet to want to lose. So that's why it's so easy for me to be fully committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's just win-win all the way around. Can't lose. All the chips in the middle of the table. All in with Jesus Christ. Hey, listen. Hope you guys have a great week. If you have questions, again, shoot me an email or text. Uh, either way, you can get, contact me. All right? Take care and enjoy your week, and we'll be getting ready for week four.